playoff football. It's do or die, win or go home. Maine alumnus Jack Cosgrove and star quarterback Warren Smith are trying to create history, while second-year Georgia Southern coach Jeff Munkin and his young dynamo Dominique Swope are returning the FCS's most proud program to prominence. Will the Black Bears march on to their first semifinal, or will the Eagles soar closer to a seventh crown? It's Maine versus Georgia Southern next on ESPN3. Welcome to the 2011 NCAA Division I Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Today from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, it's a quarterfinal round matchup between the Black Bears of Maine and the Georgia Southern Eagles. The remaining teams in what was a 20-team field, top-seeded Sam Houston State taking on Montana State. The victor will face two-time champion of Montana. While Georgia Southern and Maine square off, the victor rewarded with either Lehigh or North Dakota State in the semifinals. And a good afternoon, everybody. John Sadak alongside the former North Carolina head coach, John Bunning. We have about as stark a contrast as you can. Maine from the frozen tundra of the Northeast has never been to a semifinal. Georgia Southern speaks for itself in locale, as does the six national titles. Well, that's what makes the F FCS so special. You have a playoff system. And it's a reward just to get here and then to advance. This is a really special day for both these teams. You don't get to the playoffs, and you certainly don't advance without stars. For Maine, quarterback Warren Smith leads the way. Yeah, quarterback Warren Smith, he is the most improved player for Maine because of the decisions that he's making. He needs to get everybody involved early today. The receivers, the short routes outside. He needs to get the tight end on the bootleg pass. And then he needs to get the offensive line and Kushan Brown going in the running game. On the other side of the ball, you have the SoCon Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, he is a great player, and for that to happen, they got to get this guy accounted for. This Brent Russell, he majors in construction management, but on the field, he majors in destruction management. He's a former wrestler, so he's got great hands and feet, and he is one relentless football player. Relentless as well, Dominique Swope. He is now the primary back, taking that role from incumbent Robert Brown. He is. That guy, he lines up only five yards deep, but his ability to hit top speed in the line of scrimmage allows him to break arm tackles and then burst into the secondary, making big plays like this 76-yarder to start the second half last week against ODU. Assignment will be paramount, and it starts in the secondary with two great safeties. Uh, Trevor Costin and Jerome McMillan, those are the best ten of safeties I've seen this year. They have, to, they have great football intelligence, are aggressive and hard-hitting, and they will need to make touchdown-saving tackles inside and then move to the open side of the out and get some open field tackles to stop the pitch. The only remaining teams from FCS's top two conferences, the CAA and the SOCOM. They clash, one moves on, kickoff is next. The Eagle flies often to championship success. Six times Georgia Southern has tasted championship type success at Statesboro. It started with that man, the great Irk Russell. He's the coach that restarted this football program while Maine alumnus Jack Cosgrove has taken hunting before football in Maine after that win against App State. What has the community response been like between the community and your players? Well, I mean, the, the thing that's really neat, we have a great following down here today. It was really neat. Uh, we had a bunch of alums and, and friends of the program join us in the flight. The parents are all here, and we're going to need every everything we can get. This is a great crowd, a great environment. We're excited to be here, and we're going to need their support. Now, in 2002, these teams last met. It was Georgia Southern that put an end to the Black Bear season. A win today would be a semifinal berth for the first time in Black Bear history. John? Well, thank you, Angela. And this stadium that is steeped in tradition, getting reinvigorated by head coach Jeff Munkin. He has come back and led Georgia Southern to back-to-back -back double digit win campaigns last year a semifinal setback against Delaware this year looking for the semis yet again and to get there he needs to knock off a CAA team in the main black Bears the Southern Conference and the CAA put eight teams into this playoff field 
Only two total remain, and they're going head to head. Main kicking off is Georgia Southern will return. Jack Cosgrove, an alumnus of Maine. And he sees his squad with nine wins on the year, looking for another big road triumph. Brian Harvey on to kick away as the towels get swung around. Tens of thousands populate the prettiest little stadium in America. And Georgia Southern's kick return team, one of the best in the country. LaRon Scott, second in the country, averages 30 yards a return. The kick away, and we are underway in the quarterfinal round of the FCS playoffs as this one sails out of bounds. They take away the return game, but outstanding field position, John Bunning, as these Georgia Southern Eagles come out of the field led by their quarterback in Jay Bo Shaw. That's not how you want to get started. Jay Bo Shaw, a Georgia Tech transfer. A senior out of Flowery Branch, Georgia, second team all conference in both the coaches and media honors, and would be second in the country in quarterback efficiency if he had enough attempts to qualify. You need 15 a game. He's only attempted 108 all year, and that's indicative of what we'll see today. Run, run, run. Comes out in a mini pistol with a split backfield behind him, and then a major change of formation right at the line of scrimmage. Out of the bone with motion. And they'll run the dive. Dominique Swope, one of the outstanding talents, one of many backs that average about seven yards a carry, and that's thanks to this offensive line. Now Dorian Bird, the usual starter at left tackle, has had some ankle issues. He's out. And the man who had been the starter at the B-back position, Robert Brown, not listed as a starter coach, but a man that could do a lot. We could see him at the A-back position. He made a, several great plays last week against ODU. So here's Jay Bo Shaw on second down and four. Motion and a dive. Dominique Swope, and that'll be a first down. Gain of five, and already Georgia Southern is in main territory. And here's the unit trying to defend it. Michael Cole led the CAA, 11 sacks on the season. The linebacking core led by Vinson Gibbons. Second team all CAA performer, had hard right life growing up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Head coach Jack Cosgrove said nobody committed faster than he did. And you know about the star safeties in Costin and McMillan. Both all league, both with professional chance. First and ten. Motion again, and another dive, and why not? Right, coach, until they prove they can stop it. Stominic Swope gets a gain of about four. That's actually an inside trap. They will use that on occasion. Sometimes they influence by pulling the onside guard, but pull the backside guard and trap the defensive tackle. Stopping this triple option machine is what Maine has to do. They got to find a way to get a couple stops. Last week, ODU only stopped him with two fumbles, touchdowns every single other possession. Motion, and here's the straight option as the pitch goes out to Nick Yo Hickey. And Hickey, a gain of five to the 41-yard line, third and short. Here, the, the ball gets out to the perimeter, to the pitch, and here comes McMillan up to make a shoestring tackle. But it's third and short. These are great down and distances for Georgia Southern. Nico Hickey had a broken collarbone suffered in the playoffs last year. That was a first-round win against South Carolina State. It happened just two plays before Jabo Shaw was thrown to the ground and had his jaw injured and continued to play on the semis. They run the dive with Swope, and that's an easy first down. The interior of that main front is having a lot of difficulty. Georgia Southern has big four-foot splits between the center and the two guards. Those are the A-gaps, and they are wide open. Maine has got to find a way to plug those gaps, either with a defensive tackle stunt or a linebacker jumping up in that A-gap. Five plays, five rushes one of the nation's top rushing attacks second in the country trailing only another triple option team out of its own league playoff participant Wofford which has been eliminated off the play fake Jabo gonna throw and Jabo Shaw has himself a first down and nearly a touchdown JJ Wilcox brings it in the junior 
Out of Cairo, Georgia, the syrup makers in the high school ranks. And this is how they sneak attack. They ran off the safety and then had Wilcox trailing in a second level route. Great pass by J Ball Shaw. 32 yard completion. So now down and goal, just a couple of yards away. And you wonder what they'll do. I don't wonder that. <laughs> <laughs> Little sarcasm there, coach. <laughs> I'm picking up on you. j on the keeper. Slope leads the way, and he darts in for six. On the quarterback follow. And this is not a surprise to see what they do early. Maine's big opportunities will come later. They've got to find a way to get used to this game speed running this offense because they've been practicing it a lot up there in Orono, but there's no way to substitute for the game speed that they're looking at right now. Jay Bullshaw's 13th rushing touchdown. Now Adrian Mora has the FCS record for consecutive extra points made. It was snapped last week, but he's perfect on this afternoon. Georgia Southern, seven plays, 60 yards, three minutes and 20 seconds, and already pay dirt. Jay Bullshaw on the keeper, and Georgia Southern a 7-0 lead in pursuit of a 7 back. The Georgia Southern Eagles, one possession, one score. They did not punt once last week. Put 55 on the board in this stadium and taking out Old Dominion. Seven plays, 60 yards. Jay Bullshaw on the run. And Georgia Southern keeping it on the ground, but getting it in the end zone. And now it's up to Maine's offense. As we see the kickoff duties handled by Billy Greer. Maine's primary return man, Roosevelt Boone. Back there along with Alex Ofori, normally a defensive back. John, that defense is over there on the sideline. They're talking with their defensive coordinator. Joe Rossi, they've got to get some things figured out. They've got to eliminate doubt, try to get rid of any conflicts that they have in their mind as they see things out there on the field. And then they've got to make great tackles. Tackling was not an issue. It's just the fact that those splits are so wide. They are opening up those a gaps To slip the great running back Dominic Swope into Here's the kick From Billy Greer right-footed effort With some good leg great hang time and it's up to Roosevelt Boone from just inside his own 20 Roosevelt Boone double-digit run back So he gets a return of 16 yards and it's Maine's offense led by Warren Smith. Offside, number one, kicking team. Five yards will be added on, first down. An Ohio Valley Conference officiating crew as this penalty goes on, Jarek McKinnon. Finds a crease right there. Roosevelt Boone has been their kick return guy and a backup running back all year. A little slight, but he is quick. Maine coming out with some extra big boys. Double tight, deep single back. And off goes to push on Brown, and Brown gets a couple, and that's it. Brent Russell, SoCon Defensive Player of the Year, on the hit. John, they've got to find ways to double team him on the run game and then turn the protection to him. Find him all the time. They've got to get him taken care of each and every play. Smith out of the gun. Does have the ability to audible. Maine often scripts its opening drive. And off Pushon Brown on a stretch. No, they're going to go deep. One on one and a little contact and a pick. McKinnon. He's the backup quarterback. He's thrown for a touchdown. He's run for a touchdown. He's caught a TD. And there he might have saved one by leaving the pick off Warren Smith. And so this main unit that rarely turns it over, plus 11 in turnover margin on the season, second in the Colonial Athletic Association, 16th in all the land, gives it away on its first possession. I thought this would be a bootleg, and it looked like it to the 
Georgia Southern defense, but the cornerback playing back there, he did a terrific job hanging back and staying with the throwback receiver. Warren Smith, just his 12th interception of the year for McKinnon. That's pick number two. He does it all for them. McKinnon is a superior athlete. Motion and a toss. Darian Robinson absorbs first harm against Irwin Roach and finally gets escorted out of bounds after a gain of about eight. You know, Troy Eastman is playing the right linebacker, what I call the stack linebacker position today. Instead of Vinson Givens, he's moved to the middle linebacker position. And on that play right there, Eastman overruns the pitch. He's got to stay inside out and use leverage to get the ball carried down instead of making an arm tackle and pick up four more yards. Here's Georgia Southern on second and two. It's been money on every single snap so far for Jabo Shaw. Why not go to the well and Dominique Swope? It looks like he'll be about a half yard short. And that's rare, coach. This Georgia Southern team racks up yards with reckless abandon. Swope averages seven yards a carry. Robert Brown, seven yards a carry. Nine a carry for J.J. Wilcox. Six for Darian Robinson. How do you stop these guys? <laughs> it's really difficult. You've got to figure out the triple option puzzle it is a puzzle and it takes a while to get used to it because you can't simulate it in practice third and short and some motion easily Shaw had it on the keeper but here's the Ball call start 31 offense five yard penalty remains third down now this goes on Swope the true freshman out of Buford Georgia who is not built like a true freshman six foot 209 pounds you wonder how he gets a procedure on a quarterback sneak. I'd say he's a little anxious as a freshman. You know, he didn't start until three games ago. That's how significant Swope is. Georgia Southern riding the back of Swope and Robert Brown. 51% successful on third downs this year. Tops in the SOCON. But third and six, the pitch goes out to J.J. Wilcox, and that's a first down and more. Set up the picket fence out there. Great blocks by the A-back and the wide receiver. This is how they get big chunks. 18-yard run, the hit by Vincent Givens, and here's what they did last week. Last week, they just opened up the gates for Swope inside, and they've started that way today. But then when you start taking away those A-gap plays, they take it outside on the pitch play or the option in the pitch. 55-48 final. Besting a CAA squad at Old Dominion is now a toss play. Goes to Nico Hickey. They get him out toward the boundary, and they get a first down to the 45-yard line. Again, Givens on the hit. But a 12-yard plunge, and Georgia Southern is dictating this game entirely. And once again, you have the pitch play or you have the toss play. This block out here on number 32, Troy Eastman, he cuts him right down to the ground. Eastman's slow to get up. This takes a pounding on a defensive team, and it can really work with your mind, and it also can work with you physically. Right now, they're taking it to him. It may normally rather stalwart against the run fourth in the CAA held Appalachian State three-time national champs to three yards rushing last week is here Swope. Look at that quick first step just burst forward over left guard and Troy Russell brings him down a couple of yards short of the marker He hits top speed right away the Quarterback reverses out. It's a belly They work what we call express blocking the line just avoid the defensive line go up to the next level and block the linebackers creates a lot of running lanes and so the rushing yardage no surprise Georgia Southern outstanding so far today 11 rushes 76 yards second down to two and a flat had to swerve easily as the first down gets submarine beyond the 30 but this might illegal be motion back. two men in motion at the snap five yard penalty remains second down first time I've heard the penalty call come as the whistle was being blown. <laughs> I am sure Coach Munkin is saying, these are self-inflicted wounds over here. we got to stop that kind of stuff. Those are two unnecessary penalties I've gotten so far. 
This Georgia Southern team is the third most penalized squad out of the Southern Conference, averaging about 43 yards in penalties. And even though his Eagles last week did not have to punt once on the game, Jeff Munkin said it was far from a perfect offensive day. That's the way those triple option guys think. <laughs> he talked about some issues on pitches. Is here a pitch from Shaw looking at Nico Hickey. And Hickey to the 35, taken down by Troy Russell. That's right around the marker. It'll depend upon the spot. Maine has, is having a lot of trouble getting the safeties up involved in the alley, the place between the linebacker and the cornerbacks. They're going to fill that lane to stop the pitch. And they don't even bother to measure. Good spot for Georgia Southern and Jeff Munkin. He apprenticed under Paul Johnson. Follow the legendary head coach now at Georgia Tech. Georgia Southern to Navy. Came back here to Statesboro. Dominique Swope on the dive. And Swope to around the 30-yard line. When people talk about West Coast offenses, and I talk about Maine, they have the North Coast offense. This offense is so difficult to simulate in practice, you've got to survive the first quarter. West Coast, you survive the script of plays. With this outfit right here, you've got to survive the first quarter. See if you can hold them to 14 points. Eighth play of the drive for Georgia Southern, which owns time of possession by a wide margin. Just keeping clock. They fake it to Swope. Late pitch goes out to Robert Brown. And a first down. Slips through the first would-be tackle of Jerron McMillan. He gets an extra couple of strides before the safety brings him to earth. Hey, Jerron McMillan, he's tied up by the A-back out there. He can't get loose. We got a player run down. We got the wide receiver blocking on McMillan. The cornerback is going to come fill that lane. You got to crack replace. When somebody cracks on the on the safety, the cornerback is going to fill off that. 16 yards on that gallop. Robert Brown began the day 74 yards short of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. And, oh, yeah, he's not the starter anymore. Instead, it's this guy, Dominique Swope. Givens tries to stand him up, and Swope just pushes him aside and gets another couple of yards. This offensive line provided Swope for 304 yards rushing against Alabama. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good defense they're playing against. So this is no easy task to defend this triple option. And this offensive line of Georgia Southern is getting better and better. Swope, eight rushes, 39 yards already. He's closing in on 1,000. As Shaw, flanked by Robert Brown, gets the late pitch. Nice spin. And more extra yardage. Troy Russell brings him down just inside the 10. This will be about a yard short of the marker, but for Georgia Southern, this is about picture perfect outside of a TD. You watch out here in the perimeter. The lead blocker out there on McMillan, he gets free but is not able to make the tackle because he is playing on the ground. Last week, the video people here at Georgia Southern counted over 90 knockdowns of ODU. Large split on that defensive line. They hedge, thinking Shaw will keep over guard. He does. It doesn't matter. That's a first down and goal. Gain of a couple. Watch the offensive line come off here. Put their hats right there in the, in the chest of the main defensive lineman. And now Georgia Southern in the red zone. Jeff Munkin, who was coaching in his blood. His dad, Mike, 11 other family members, and four brothers have coached high school, college, or pro ball. Now he's trying to lead Georgia Southern to a national championship. Motion. And a keeper for Shaw, but not a whole lot. And Jeff Munkin has a cousin who knows a thing or two about trying to win a national title. His cousin Todd, the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, which, according to some, should be in the mix for an FBS, BCS national title. This is the one time where Georgia Southern will bring in some tight ends and get into a goal line package. They'll get an extra offensive lineman. 
in the game at tight end. Second down and goal. Pitch goes out to Wilcox. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And I could just see some heads over there on the main defense saying, what are we going to do? I mean, they're looking at one another. It's frustrating. Once again, they've got to survive this first quarter. And what they really need now is for Maine to come out on offense and go down, push the ball down, and score some points themselves. Swinging gate from Georgia Southern. Maine is great at blocking extra points. Has blocked nearly double-digit kicks on the year. This one away from Adrian Mora. And one of FCS's all-time great kickers sends it through. A 13-play, 79-yard drive that takes more than eight minutes. Wilcox for six. Southern by 14. We'll have more from the prettiest little stadium in America after this. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, where Georgia Southern has touched the ball twice, two possessions, two scores, the latest off a two-yard plunge by J.J. Wilcox. Wilcox, who was Georgia Southern's top pass catcher last year, now has six rushing touchdowns. At eight minutes and three seconds of clock eaten up, the main bench and head coach Jack Cosgrove just got hit in the face, coach. I tell you what, you just don't really know what to expect until you get out here on this field playing in game conditions. So kick time and a second opportunity for Maine's offense. Roosevelt Boone, Axel Ofori, deep to receive. And one thing about Coach Cosgrove, he, he tells me that this team is a bunch of road warriors. They played at Pitt, played at JMU, played at Richmond, played at Villanova, played at UNH, played at App State. Now they're here at Georgia Southern. They believe that they can get the game to the fourth quarter, they can win. They need to take the ball down the field now. Here's the kick from Billy Greer. Good right-footed effort. Roosevelt Boone bobbles but settles just in front of his own 10. Now proving elusive. Boone with a window. He I has a four to his it. fellow return man blocking. Boone, 10, 5, and touchdown. And no flags. How about that for taking it back? <laughs> and scoring. He bobbles and that sometimes sets it up for the runner. Got a missed tackle right there, another missed tackle right there, but then he outruns everybody. He had some great blocks, but he also broke a couple tackles himself. Roosevelt Boone putting Maine right back in the game. The problem here is that defense hasn't gotten any rest. But coach, the officials are now gathered right around the 20-yard line. What is being discussed after that 90-yard return, Boone's first kickoff return for a touchdown? Here's the word conduct on the kicking team's bench that 15 yard penalty will be added on the kickoff the foul was for a coach in the restricted area during the play interfering with an official touchdown and so a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct on Georgia Southern's coaching staff and the bench so not only does Maine have a score to get within a TD, but we'll get some outstanding chance to pin Georgia Southern deep as Brian Harvey is on for the point after out of the hold of Chris Treister. Justin Perillo doubles his tight end and snapper. The snap, hold, and kick away. And the kick is good. Officially credited as a 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, Roosevelt Boone has given Maine new life. It's 14-7 in the quarterfinals. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. NCAA FCS Championship quarterfinal, a 14-7 game. Maine is on the board thanks to a 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Roosevelt Boone. But a penalty committed during the course of that run back coach it will affect this kickoff yeah he's going to kick it 15 yards closer to the goal line and that's all a result of what happened on the sideline i've seen that happen before on a kickoff or a punt return referees are sprinting down the protected area from the actual end of the sideline into the bench area and there is an area where coaches are not supposed to be those referees start flying down that sideline. They, they have no vision. 
And they probably tripped either, either over a coach or over a cord. And that's upsetting and that should be called. Got to stay out of that area. Usual punter, Jordan Waxman. On to kick away, Laurent Scott. The outstanding return man, no chance. So a touchback as we look at what Georgia Southern did to take its lead to a couple of scores. Lots of guys keep touching the ball on this drive. There's Wilcox. There's Hickey. We give it to the big boy, Swope. And then the, the pitch out there to Robert Brown, number five. Five different guys touching the ball to go down and score a touchdown. It's 19 rushes, 117 yards for Georgia Southern. One for one on passing for 32 yards in time of possession. 11 minutes and 23 seconds for the Eagles to one minute and three seconds for me. Toss, Darian Robinson. And Robinson out of bounds as we go down to the sidelines and Angela Mallett. A typical Saturday for Jay Boshaw's family is spent apart as they have double duty. Their son Connor is also the quarterback at the University of South Carolina. These guys are best friends. They talk every day. And some of their most fond memories are actually in high school when their father coached them. Jay Bo was the receiver and Connor was the quarterback. And today, what a special deal with the entire family able to be in the in the picture for today's game. And so Jay Bo. Under center, transferred from Georgia Tech. The second year QB faking the dive, decides to tuck and run and absorbs a wise hit. Nice job by Craig Capella to get penetration, but a wise loss of yardage there for Shaw. Better on the perimeter. They, they feathered the quarterback with the defensive end. He didn't charge upfield. He allowed the quarterback to run towards him, and then he ran out of running room. Got him on the ground. And so Maine likely feels as good as it has all day defensively but third and five Georgia Southern is still more than within striking distance for a first down but th John this is one where they need to convert Shaw design pass play a couple of pumps first down Zach Walker the freshman brings it in a yard beyond the marker move the chains for the Eagles when you're playing against run 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 you really don't pin your ears back to go after a quarterback like you would in normal third and five down in distances. You still have to play the run. Great protection. Great vision by Jay Bosch Shaw coming back to find Walker on the deep hook. And Kendall James, the corner in coverage. He's the man that shut down Appalachian State's NFL bound Brian Quick a week ago. First down and 10, final minute in this opening quarter. Quarterfinal round and Shaw on the keep. And even on plays that don't look great, it's a gain of three yards. You just don't get many TFLs, tackles for losses against this outfit. They're always going forward. Raybone Charles, the nose tackle, third team all league performer. A walk on who head coach Jack Cosgrove said many programs believed was not big enough, but he has proven. Not only those programs, but the Black Bears as well, who did not recruit him wrong. He's a three-year starter. He's an anchor on that defensive front. Second down and seven, likely the final play of the quarter. A little flick goes out to Darian Robinson, and he goes out of bounds. Doug Alston, the stud defensive end, bringing him out of play. Once again, a really good job out there on the outside the perimeter defending the, the quarterback in the pitch feathering the quarterback they really need to make the quarterback run to win this football game today don't let don't let swope ruin their day and so a gain of three it'll be third and four when we come back the pop and circumstance of playoff football from statesboro georgia the eagles 14-7 leading the main Black Bears. You're watching the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. A berth in the national semifinal on the line. Georgia Southern looking for its all-time record seventh national title, while Maine 
trekking toward a semifinal for the first time in program history. The main Black Bears have been to these playoffs several times before. Only in two prior seasons, though, have they ever won a game. That was back-to-back -back years in 2001-2002. Jack Cosgrove was the head coach back then. And most recently in 02, it was a defeat at the hands of Georgia Southern that ended Maine's playoff push. At the start of the second quarter, third down and four for Georgia Southern, which has dominated time of possession, owning almost 14 minutes of the first quarter. Toss play, Jonathan Bryant. That's an easy first down. Boy, they're working their way into number 32, Troy Eastman's side frequently. And I'm seeing him on the ground quite a bit. That young man that can't get the storage, he's got to be able to play off blocks with his hands. Take a look at the history of Georgia Southern football. Eric Russell, longtime defensive coordinator at the University of Georgia, revived the program, and three years later, it was a national title. They ran the ham bone back then. Same basic offense, but run by the legendary Tracy Ham, an athletic Hall of Famer here at Georgia Southern and a Canadian Football League star. It's a dive play, gets only about a couple of yards. Still great push, Kevin Fanor, the senior out of Brooklyn, New York, the nose tackle in there on the hit. And Georgia Southern now five for five on third downs, coach. And two of them in third and four plus, and that's that's what you would call an advantage for the main defense, and then not been able to convert those. I just saw Robert Brown, the backup, be back, who also played some A back, walk off the field, so he must be getting some treatment inside. So Robert Brown leaving the field of play, and Jay Bo Shaw continuing to lead Georgia Southern toward another score. And off up the gut. Dominique Swope brought down by Vincent Gibbons. And here's Georgia Southern in Maine territory. It feels like a flip of the script for these Black Bears who owned field position last week and knocking off the three-time national champion Appalachian State Mountaineers. Third time on this drive, though, they're facing third and four plus. They need to convert one of these. Of course, converting on third for, for them on third and four to make it fourth and two, that doesn't mean Georgia Southern it won't go far and possibly make it then. They're a four-down team. Third down and five for Jabo Shaw and company. Hand off Dominique Swope. And Swope, with second effort, churns his legs to the 45, gain of three. So indeed, it will be that predicted fourth down and two. Vincent Givens on the hit. Watch it as he makes contact. This, this young player is so strong, continues to fight with his feet in his, in his upper body. And this is no surprise going far on fourth and one. These are the dangerous plays for the quarterback follow play where they bring the A back into the A or B gap. And that's exactly what they do. So a generous spot helped a bit, but they're more than a yard beyond the marker anyway. Jabo Shaw is going to carry it most of the times on this fourth and ones following Swope into the, the hole, fakes it in there, and, and Swope just acts as an additional blocker. You can't account for that on defense. So Georgia Southern's drive continues. These Eagles play to big crowds with great frequency. It's one of the best draws in the FCS, a stadium that holds 18,000, often populated by more than 20,000. And off at a dive up the middle by Swope, but goes a little more down to earth in his pursuits and gets taken down by Raybone Charles, the nose tackle. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, folks. The main offense has been on the field for like three plays, two, three plays. This main defense has got to be getting tired, and we got a player down right now. It looks like Maine. Troy Eastman, the rover linebacker out of Rahway, New Jersey. Led his high school to the New Jersey State Finals. Let's take a look. He's the one I've been watching lately. He's been cut on the ground frequently. That is an inside trap play with the offensive tackle caving down the inside linebacker. And that time he was taken from behind. By Blake DiBartola. And so we'll step aside.
as they tend to Troy Eastman. It is a 14-7 Georgia Southern lead. The quarterfinals on ESPN3. The Georgia Southern Eagles enjoy a 14-7 lead. Their drive continues, and we take a look at the inner workings of the triple option. Well, here's a little sucker play for him. This is an influence trap where this guy is going to pull, this guy is going to influence, and this guy is going to block down right here. Influence trap. The guard pulls in front of the tackle. The backside guard pulls and kicks him out, and the offensive tackle blocks down on Eastman, number 32. And Troy Eastman went off the field under his own power. Appeared to be okay as he got to the sidelines. But Maine coming out, showing blitz pressure. Second down and eight. Shaw on the edge. Late toss to Darian Robinson. And he's brought down by Darlos James, the quarterback. You can see Maine's getting better on the perimeter. They want them to run into the boundary, the short side of the field, and they're feathering the quarterback, making him run, and therefore they get better control over the pitch back. Now another third down, the 12th play of this drive, which is already in excess of six minutes long. Fortunately for Maine, they have a number of guys that can put in on defense of uh, the defensive line. Third and four, Georgia Southern, and flags fly. Start, 31 offense, five-yard penalty, third down. So again, it goes on Dominique Swope. That's now five penalties for 35 yards against Georgia Southern, two coming out of motion by the back. Unforced errors. That makes a coach on the sideline, particularly the head guy, a little hot under the collar. Georgia Southern, the Southern Conference champion. First crown since 04, the ninth in program history. Shaw third and long. And Shaw to the 35-yard line as we get an update on the injury situation from Angela Mallon. Like you said, John, Troy did come off the field under his own power. That's number 32, Troy Eastman. He's being evaluated. It does not look like he's going to re-enter the ball game. They're putting ice on his right leg right now. They will evaluate at halftime, but it does not look good for number 32, Troy Eastman. John? Well, thank you, Angela. And as a result, we have seen Sam Shipley, the Santa Barbara Community College transfer, come on in his place. He had that last tackle setting up this fourth down. Georgia Southern has already converted a fourth down today, but that was a fourth and a long one. On fourth and four, Shaw to the edge. White jerseys in his face, and the late flip, no go. Troy Russell, the linebacker, turns aside Georgia Southern, and Maine can take a breath and finally go back on the offense. Terrific job out here playing the second and third options of the triple option. They feathered the quarterback again. McMillan came up and destroyed the, the, the stock block of Patrick Barker, number 84, allowing the tackler to come in and make the play. So Darian Robinson's run falls short, and here's the main offense led by Warren Smith. John, they haven't been out here in so long, they, they, they're going to be cold sitting over there in that sideline. They weren't even sure where, where to go to get it back out here in the field. Warren Smith out of the gun. Handing it off, push on Brown. And Brown, great second effort. Gets to the 41, gain of seven. Set in the open, they need to get this run game going, but I expect them to have to throw the ball first. And here's a look at Maine's offense, which has not been on the field much. One of the scores came thanks to the kickoff return game. Arthur Williams, Demar Altman, they're the wideouts to look for. Wide receiving core has been decimated by injury, including top target Maurice McDonald, done for the year, and sensational tight end Derek Buttles, done for the year. Second and three. Smith on a draw, giving Georgia Southern a bit of its own medicine. That's a first down on the quarterback keep as we take a look at the Georgia Southern defense. It all starts with Brent Russell on that line, Southern Conference's defensive player of the year. Top five in 
career sacks in Georgia Southern history. And, oh, yeah, he has another year of eligibility. Darius Eubanks, outstanding athlete in the linebacking core. And LaRon Scott, many think he'll play on Sundays in that secondary. Maine will do this from time to time. Hard bark, try to get the opponent to jump. And sometimes change play or formation at the line of scrimmage. And the 12th man, the tens of thousands at Paulson Stadium, trying to get their presence felt. Play fake. Deep ball. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Got him! DeVar Altman. They go big play in a big way, and Maine is inside of the 10-yard line. Terrific throw by the quarterback, Warren Smith. I've seen this team play on tape before. They've had, they've struggled to throw their deep ball. That one is perfect, right down the chimney. Great job by Altman to focus and catch that ball in his hands, almost on top of his helmet. 47-yard play. When Maine scored 34 points last week to beat Appalachian State, every touchdown came on a play in excess of 20 yards. That can't come here, down a goal from the nine, and Warren Smith on the keeper. Inside of the five, mark him down at the two. That is a gain of seven for the gutsy Warren Smith. Warren Smith will carry the football, and he has some really good gains. He likes to run the quarterback power out. Watch the running back, Pushan Brown, block out, and here's the pulling guard coming around the center, wrapping around, and he follows the pulling guard up right up in the hole. And the senior out of Forkin River, New Jersey, the Iona transfer, his head coach, Jack Cosgrove, called him the most improved player in the Colonial Athletic Association. Flanked by Pushan Brown with their accession in motion. Georgia Southern late shows blitz. Pushan Brown tippy-toeing toward the end zone, and he's short, gain of maybe a yard. And coach, very late, we saw Georgia Southern creep up some of those secondary members tight to the line. They're going to try to stop this running game here of Maine in the red zone. Maine has gotten 64% touchdowns in this red zone, and they need one desperately here. Smith under center. Calls for motion. Push on Brown, the deep setback on third and goal. Brown, nothing. And who is it? Brent Russell there brings him down for a loss at the five. Fourth down for the Black Bears, and coach... I know it's a one-score game, but you've got to be thinking touchdown, right? You what want to be, absolutely, you're thinking touchdown. But here, deep down, you don't want this drive to go for naught. You've got to kick it. So Maine sends on the field goal unit. Keep in mind, Georgia Southern, in its win last week, did not punt once. It has scored on two of its three drives today. And here it's field goal time for Brian Harvey. He has had two field goals blocked on the year, including one just last week. Last week, and Chris Trister the, is the backup quarterback. And it he looks like we'll have a timeout. A good time for a timeout. Maybe they're not sure exactly what they want to do. Maybe they sent him in with a fake. I've seen Trister run a fake to win a football game in overtime down at JMU. He's, he said, this, this team plays hard. They've got great senior leadership, and they really need a score here. And Jack Cosgrove out of the timeout. Does he take a chance? As we take a look back and see the Black Bears' exploits in Boone, North Carolina from a week ago. Teams generally don't win in Boone, but Maine not only went there through the air, and also with its defense and Michael Cole, only three yards rushing for Appalachian State. It's Maine was plus three in turnovers, including a pick late by Kendall James. The Brian Harvey out of the hold of Chris Treister. A 21-yard try. The kick away, and the kick is true. So Brian Harvey's eighth made field goal in 14 tries on the year makes it a four-point game. Georgia Southern and that triple option back on the field. When we come back, it's the FCS quarterfinals. A seven-play, 62-yard main drive.
Takes three minutes and 37 seconds, capped off by a Brian Harvey 21 yard field goal. But Maine, Coach Bunning, these Black Bears, they were down at the two, stuck for a loss on a hit by Brent Russell and had to settle for a field goal instead of a draw. They'd love to have scored, but it's good for their confidence to get some points on the board offensively and good to get that defense three minutes and 28 seconds of rest. And what a job, though, by Warren Smith to be on the bench as long as he has this game and come in essentially cold on your only prior possession, having thrown one of your rare interceptions on the year. Heck of a drive to march him down the field. Absolutely. It was a great throw and great catch. But you're right. They were over the sideline for a good eight, nine, ten minutes. Brent Russell had the big hit. Began the day with 19 and a half sacks, fifth in school history. Try to close in on Giff Smith. Try to move up the all-time ranks. So Russell, three tackles, one tackle for loss. 13 and a half tackles for loss now on the season. As Maine is given the task of trying to stop Georgia Southern's offense yet again. LaRon Scott, second in the country in kickoff return. The all-time leader at Georgia Southern history at kickoff return yardage. He was a first-team all-league performer, both in the secondary and on special teams. Kickoff duties from Jordan Waxman, the senior out of Kintersville, Pennsylvania. And they push it. They're going to concede some field position to Georgia Southern. Fair catch was called for, and that means Georgia Southern has to settle for not-so-great field position as they could have had at the 33. Darian Robinson, the man that called for the fair catch, but we take another look. Absolutely, that was called by the non-fielding player there. He called for a fair catch. That is his illegal play. They put the ball back where it was, where it was caught by the receiver. No foul. So K.R. Snipes had the hand signal, and now it's Georgia Southern officially at its own 33-yard line. Three prior possessions, two scores. And here, first down handoff. Dominique Swope to the 35. Gain of a couple. Ryan Nani, defensive lineman. Don't see Eastman back, so that means Shipley is in the middle. Deshaun Givens moves to the stack backer, the will linebacker. That's hard to do from a, you know, for any style of offense, move from the middle to the to the will. And more difficult for somebody doing it versus the option. There you saw Troy Eastman on crutches. That's not a good sign. Second down and eight. Play fake. Shaw wide open. First down, Contrella Showers, the redshirt freshman out of Dublin, Georgia, his ninth catch of the year. By the way, that puts him second on the squad. It tells you how often they put it in the air. Well, they get the play fake in there, get two receivers downfield, one short, one long. And the quarterback takes a big hit here at the very end. It's by Nanny, I believe. Ryan Nanny. Senior out of Tom's River North High School. Kendall James on the tackle. And now first down. Toss barely caught cleanly by Jonathan Bryant. And that'll be a loss of about half a yard. Let's see again the teams remaining in this field. What was a 20-team tournament at the start. It's been whittled down to these quarterfinals. Already through is Montana. Sam Houston State routing Montana State. Undefeated Sam Houston State has a win against an FBS program. The winner of Maine, Georgia Southern, takes on the victor of Lehigh, North Dakota State. Still to come, the 2011 NCAA Division I Football Championship continues next weekend with semifinal games December the 16th and 17th. Both games will be on the ESPN networks. Shaw on the keep. That'll be a first down. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Now this play to the outside, the, they fakes it 
the pitch and takes it up inside. They've been feathering that pitch, that quarterback, for a long time. Now he fakes it, takes it up for a big gainer at first down. An 11-yard run, Givens with the tackle. The methodical drive of Georgia Southern. You can almost feel like the Eagles will plunge into the end zone just as halftime will come. These teams met the playoffs in 2002. That was a whitewashing 31 to 7. Georgia Southern has won both prior all-time meetings and might be well on its way yet again. J.J. Gotcha. Wilcox with a first down. Flag on the play. Here comes the quarterback down the line of scrimmage. He's got a blocker. He fakes the pitch to the deep back and then pulls it down, takes it upfield. That 11-yard run set up what looked to be a first down, but here's the call. Illegal block in the back. 76 offense. 10-yard penalty remains first down so trevor mcburnett the redshirt freshman out of lawrenceville georgia commits the infraction now they're going to get a holding or a call right here on 76. illegal block in the back and so j bo shaw with 24 rushing yards 47 passing now has a first down and nine as a result of the penalty. And movement very late flag comes, but clearly the left side of the line moved. Call start, 31 offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Again goes on Dominique Swope, the true freshman. You know, we talked in the open about how Swope hits it so fast, but there's no reason to be fast on quarterback sneaks or play action pass. Now, I almost thought that the left tackle, Blake DeBartola, showed that he moved even before Swope did there. So the penalty's piling up, but they haven't had much of an impact on Georgia Southern so far. Shaw to the original line of scrimmage, and a few more for Zach Walker. Now these teams have met twice before as mentioned in 2002 that was a 31 7 finish this is the quarterback they are all run blocking they, they call this play a smoke he just throws it right out there to the wide receiver short hitch pass and then he makes a few more yards it's a great first down pickup and they also met in 1987 and that was an overtime finish 31 28 in which Maine blew a 21 3 lead now trying to come from behind against georgia southern that's tough to do with a great time of possession squad. Fake the dive. Late pitch by Shaw. Jonathan Bryant, first down. Slips through two hits. Stutter step, another side step to the six yard line. A 34 yard run, first and goal. Once again, down the line of scrimmage. And there is a block by Wilcox out there on number four Givens that really allows this play to explode. Trevor Costin eventually brought him down, but Georgia Southern knocking on the door, looking for six from the six. Jay Bo Shaw off a bad exchange. Far from clean pitch, Nico Hickey trying to will his way forward gets driven out of play by Darlos James. You're not get, going to get that fortunate in most plays for the play to become a real busted play. There was some issue on the center quarterback exchange. Broke did down get, the timing, John, is what it did. Did get a gain of a couple of yards, but it's worth noting that Georgia Southern made some changes at the center position during the course of the year. Brandavious Mann, senior, was the starting center. He was moved to the bench after the Appalachian State loss. It's here a handoff to Swope. Flag is out. He's down at the one. This is going to be another procedure call, I believe. Yeah, 
This Georgia Southern group is excited to be here, excited to be playing at home. And indeed looks like illegal shifts against Georgia Southern. It looks like Dominic Swope moves his right foot there. Illegal motion, offense, five yard penalty remains. Second to down, create that timeout, Georgia penalty. Southern. First timeout. And so Georgia Southern calls timeout. We'll take one as well. 14 10, Georgia Southern the lead, looking for a score when we come back. The tradition of winning at Georgia Southern supersedes all others. And these Eagles, who have more playoff victories than any other team in the FCS, have the lead, the ball, and just 40 seconds remaining on the first half with a second down and goal to come. This Georgia Southern drive, another clock-eating effort. Five and a half minutes started at the 33. GSU has only been stymied by itself today coaching penalties. No question about it. Just think about it. these Eagles This Georgia Southern group is 31 and 3 here at Paulson 31 and 3 in playoffs Maine's never played at home in the playoffs Shaw on second and goal The keep the toss the score JJ Wilcox his second rushing touchdown of the day J Ball Shaw holds on to this to the very last second and then pitches it to Wilcox. Outstanding play, ball handling, and on track by the running back, the A back, JJ Wilcox. Adrian Mora out of the hold of Charlie Edwards. His third extra point of the day, automatic. The FCS record holder for consecutive extra points made. Sends in another, and it's a 21 to 10 Georgia Southern lead. Jeff Munkin chatting it up with his kickoff man and Billy Greer after a nine play, 67 yard drive from his offense. Five minutes and 35 seconds, punctuated by the Wilcox plunge. And of course, John, we're only left with 35 plus seconds in this half there's not a whole lot Maine can do what would you do here hey, you could take a shot downfield you could try to run a draw play or a screen pass here and then see what you get you got two timeouts left don't yeah. want to have a issue you don't want to create a negative play for your defense to go back out on this field this main defense needs to get in there number one and rest and number two try to figure out how they can employ the game plan that they had going into the game which is to try to force georgia southern to run into the boundary down after down right now georgia southern using all of the field to run this triple option and remember maine two timeouts left due to the field goal that made it a 14 10 game they were set to kick the field goal and call the timeout just before the snap. Roosevelt Boone, the deep return man. Maine with the final seconds. This is the FCS Championship quarterfinal round from Statesboro, Georgia. And here's the kick, and it's a poacher. Maine from its own 32, and up man to the 39. Cody Simcox on the run back. And now it's Warren Smith, the ball in his hand. This main squad that was the preseason number nine choice in the 11 team CAA. And there is Brent Russell, Georgia Southern defensive nose tackle, Southern Conference defensive player of the year. And he's excited. He, he is animated. Loves playing this game here. Smith eaten up. Down to the 35. And Brent Russell, the man who's been there all day, has been harassing Warren Smith. Watch Russell. You've got to get two people on him. One blocker's not enough. He fights off a double team there and participates in the tackle. He shoots the gap of the power row behind the pulling guard and nails the running back forcing 
the field goal. The entire sideline just leapt to its feet as the stadium came to its feet. The Eagles celebrating that Maine decided to take its ball and go to the halftime locker room. And that's where we stand. A 21 to 10 Georgia Southern advantage. Coach, what have you seen in this first half? Well, I have seen Georgia Southern do what they do best, run different plays, different formations, but running their offense, the triple option for the most part with a couple inside trap plays. I've seen Maine trying to adjust to the speed of the game on defense, at times being a, doing a really good job out there on the perimeter, stopping some of the pitches and the quarterback runs. What are the thoughts of head coach Jeff Munkin? We check in with Angela on the sideline. Coach, you guys have the lead at the half, but how have the penalties affected your team? Well, I couldn't be more disappointed with the way we're playing right now. We gave up a big, long touchdown on a, on a kickoff after we score, a big play down the sideline there on a pass play, uh, silly penalties on offense killing us, and we're not going to be able to overcome that. They're a good football team. We're going to have to play better in the second half. How about ball control on offense? Are you pleased with that? Well, I think they ran one offensive play in the first quarter, so uh, that was positive. Uh, and, and, you know, we just we got a big interception. Like I said, we got to do a better job than, than what we've done the first half. Coach, thank you. Thank you. John? Thank you, Angela. As we have halftime in Statesboro, Georgia, a little chill in the air, but Georgia Southern playing some winning football. 21-10 Eagles on ESPN. And welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. 21-10. The mighty Eagles of GSU lead the main Black Bears. John Sadak alongside John Bunning. Angela Mallon patrols the sidelines. The lone remaining squads out of the CAA in the Southern Conference fighting to advance to the national semifinal. The football championship subdivision decides its ultimate victor on the field. That national championship game comes your way from Frisco, Texas in January. But who will advance next week for the national semifinals? John Bunning. You have a number highlighted on your stat sheet that really tells the tale even beyond the score, and that's the lopsided time of possession. It's incredible to look at this stat sheet and see that Maine has only been on the field offensively for five minutes and 15 seconds. Contrast that to Georgia Southern, 24 minutes and 45 seconds. They're five of seven on third down. They're one of two on fourth down. That one fourth down conversion for Maine got them back out on the field on offense. Jeff Munkin was not happy with his team at halftime, but that's the standard that his program has set. Looking for an all-time record seventh national title and a second straight trip to the semis. But Jack Cosgrove of Maine, who cracked 100 career wins this year against Delaware, trying to take Maine to where it has never been. Billy Greer on to kick. Roosevelt Boone on your screen, deep to receive. The flags are flying. The towels are circled, the kick is away, and we have second half action from Statesboro. Boone from his own five. Boone to the edge. And three hitters bring him down, including J.J. Wilcox. That's what happens in playoff football. Rosters go down to 60, and some starters on both sides of the ball get involved on special teams. And so it'll be Brent Russell against Warren Smith. Second team all CAA quarterback. Top 35 in the country in passing efficiency. Coach Koss said we got to get this offense going. Smith one of two for a pick and 47 yards. And that's his day. He hasn't had the ball much. Motion from DeMar Altman. And his first play of the second half. One on one left side. Got him. Into Georgia Southern Territory, Arthur Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Springfield, Mass. John, they only have two receivers listed at X and Z. They, they don't have any backups even listed on their depth chart. So that there is a big play for Arthur Williams to start this second half. 24-yard completion. Jack Cosgrove said that Arthur Williams and Demar Altman, his redshirt freshman, were outstanding track stars in high school, but received little in the way of football interest. And while they think the world of them, they're still growing as football players. Pushan Brown, left side. And Pushan Brown 
to around the 41 yard line. So a gain of seven. Laron Scott with the tackle. Jeff Gakos, the left guard, leading Pushon Brown, Brown around the corner to pick up that game. This is what they want. They want a mix, they want a balance of, of run and pass. But they got to get it started with their passing game. And while Georgia Southern is known for very dramatic differences in formation, Maine does it with subtlety. Here are late trips. Smith onto that strong side edge, tucking her on. And he's got some legs. Slide for well more than a first down. And Warren Smith, known for his decision making, that's the difference in Warren Smith as a senior versus as a junior. Good job by Brown out there on the edge, pinning the defensive end inside. They had it covered. Georgia Southern did a terrific job in coverage, so he pulls it down and makes a first down. These are the things that they can do with Warren Smith making good decisions. 13-yard run. And Smith, who grew up idolizing Brett Favre, points out the blitzers. Motion from Altman. Georgia Southern showing man. Maine, play fake. And on the corner, another first down. DeMar Altman, the other redshirt freshman. And Maine moving those chains. They brought pressure up the middle. That's no good versus a bootleg pass if you don't get the quarterback contained. And he is out on the edge. He's got session crossing. And he gets the deeper reception to the wide receiver. It's a second straight 13-yard completion. Warren Smith used to wear number 13. He changed to number 8 this year, but not for bad luck. It's the number that he wore throughout his Pop Warner days, his high school days. And here on the draw, the lucky number 8 has some positive yardage. Gain of about 4. He, in fact, was willed the jersey number. It's a tradition that goes on at Maine that seniors can leave their number to specific players of their choosing, and it was willed to him, perhaps with some prying, by Tyrell Jones. <laughs> There's so many good traditions here at Georgia Southern. They got their own up at Maine as well. Jack Cosgro does a terrific job coaching these guys for 19 years in Orono, Maine. He's looking for his 107th career win. Smith saw blitzers. Late changes the play. But the play clock is down to five. Motion from Altman. Looking for a quick hitter. Instead, the fade to his tight end. Touchdown! Justin Perillo brings it in. That's his fourth touchdown grab. And Maine back within more than a reasonable striking distance. A 12-yard touchdown catch. Just like that, they execute the offense of Kevin Borgoin, he is a terrific offensive coordinator. Seventh year at Maine. He does a lot of different things. As you pointed out, John, with the same personnel groupings, he makes them look different, and he confuses defenses as to how to get lined up and do their assignment on each play. Brian Harvey, the point after, out of the hold of Chris Treister. Carrillo, the man who grabbed the touchdown, is the snapper in these situations. Snap, hold, and kick. Right on. And Maine within four points. So while Maine had to sit on the sidelines most of the first half, Jack Cosgrove, who had two teeth removed this week, <laughs> not shy about the smile. 21-17, thanks to this toss. Smith to Perillo. We got a ball game in Statesboro. Jack Cosgrove, during the course of this season, received... One of the greatest coaching honors that a football coach in New England can receive. Got the New England Football Riders D1 Coach of the Year honor. The first time a main coach has received that in over 20 years as we check in with Angela Mallett. Before coming to Maine, Warren Smith was at Iona where they didn't have football scholarships and he had to pay to play. So when Iona dropped their football program, Coach Cosgrove immediately wanted to retain Smith. The feelings were mutual and Smith signed. Now, Coach Cosgrove told us yesterday that when Smith first came on the scene, it was a little shaky because his idol was Brett Favre and he was a consummate risk taker. But once he settled down, he was a great player and got voted the most improved player out of summer camp. Now this guy has 2,800 yards, over 2,800 yards, and the opportunity to be the first black bear to ever throw for 3,000 yards in a single season. John? Well, thank you, Angela. And the greater irony, he was first discovered when Maine played Iona, and he essentially took the job and was now back up at Chris Treister. It's the kickoff from Jordan Waxman. Again, nullifies the return game of Laurent Scott. 
And they say, go ahead, Eagles. Take the ball near midfield, but we're not going to risk a run back. LaRon Scott, twice this year, has run 95-plus yard kickoff returns back for a touchdown, including once against Alabama. But that type of kick gets Georgia Southern a short field. Great field position on the 44. If that was a power squib, uh, my eyes are mistaking me. I, I don't get it. That, need, that ball needs to be powered down the field. This Georgia Southern multifaceted attack comes out in a tight formation. Jabo Shaw on the option. Late pitch. Wilcox. First down. He's out running his blocker. Finally taken out of bounds by Gerard McMillan. Just about how they started the, the half last week against ODU, except it's a slightly different play, a trap option, counter option. They got defenders on the ground, and Wilcox has had a day running the football for them. 36-yard run. They just got the kickoff return. In one play, they're at the main 20-yard line. That's how explosive this triple option can be. Shaw under center. And a little dive to Swope. Gain of a yard. The versatility of this offense, though, comes in many ways from its potent personnel. As we have seen this Georgia Southern team now rush 41 times for well in excess of 250 yards, and they've used just about every name on their roster. Every one of them. Just think about last week when Maine played at State, they held them to three yards rushing. And look at those numbers today. And that all from the first half, not including the 36-yard run by Wilcox. And that's Georgia Southern option football. Second down and nine. Toss it out. Nico Hickey. Takes a hard hit to his hip by Vincent Gibbons, the linebacker. Just short of the 12-yard line, so that's a gain of a long six. Remember that the pitch is the third option off the triple, and here is the toss sweep. Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech runs the same play. It is part of the bread and butter of the running game of the triple option to run the toss plays. Get them outside in a hurry. Outnumber people with your blockers in the quick toss. Paul Johnson, four straight, then one double-A Coach of the Year honors from 97 through 2000. And the offense that he helped perfect and coin gets another dive, and this one beyond the marker, first and goal inside of the 10. There's his apprentice, Jeff Munkin. Followed Paul Johnson, Navy, Georgia Tech, and then succeeded him here in Statesboro, and his team six for eight on third down conversions today, running that offense. Now, Jeff Munkin has an OC in Brent Davis, Georgia grad, class of 97, but Munkin is heavily involved in the offensive structure and play calling. Shaw, great pitch, Hickey, Hickey, end zone, touchdown! Troy Russell draped on his back, and that's a 10-yard run. Georgia Southern responds quickly. Jack Cosgrove looking on to dismay. This is the counter trap option. The backside guard pulls. Watch the block by number seven, Dar Dar Darian Robinson on the perimeter. Shipley is trying to get now, to the quarterback. The previous play is under further review. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, 81 offense. Boy, oh boy, Coach Munkin's not going to like that at all. He's having a little chit-chat with number 81, Mitchell Williford, down there on the sideline right now. And remember that in the quarterfinal round, they now can start to use instant replay. That was not the case in the earlier rounds of the playoffs, so this is under review. Can you tell from that angle, was his knee down? before he broke the plane to the end zone. They call it a touchdown. They have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn it. His knee goes down, but the ball is where when his knee hits. This is our best angle. That's tough to That's tell. That's a touchdown. They're going to call that a touchdown. As it stands, it would be a five-play, 56-yard drive. 
starting with a squib kick that didn't result in any field position at all. Trying to keep it away from LaRon Scott. You just gave Georgia Southern about 25 yards of field position. You can't do that against this team. You know, Nico Hickey, who had his collarbone broken, the playoff win against South Carolina State last season, only began the day with one rushing touchdown. And it looks like his knee is down right there. It's tough to tell from that angle. Remember, you need indisputable video evidence. Heck of a job, though, with Troy Russell trying to bring him down to earth, and he carried him at least to the edge, if not over that plane. Now, Troy's a phenomenal athlete, but they are still out of sync between quarterback feather and the pitch play. And, of course, they're getting the terrific blocks out there, that time by Darian Robinson, number seven. Our field crew out of the Ohio Valley Conference getting word from upstairs that I believe this will be short and they're going to have to spot the football based on the video. After review, the runner was down before the goal line. <laughs> Therefore, it's second down, unsportsmanlike conduct, 81 offense. 15-yard penalty, now second down. Now you see what this really the does to this at play. At the 15 and one-half yard line. It would have been second on the down. kickoff. Now it's on the one-foot line. And Back. so it's nine penalties for 69 yards for Georgia Southern. And we take a look at exactly the infraction. And you see him right there. Engaged. And then submarining after the play. Mitchell Williford, the junior, had a Duluth, Georgia. So Jay Bo Shaw fakes the pitch. Now gives it to the edge. And just short, back Jonathan to, Bryant. Back to the same spot there, John. <laughs> just once again, great execution by the perimeter blockers for Georgia Southern. And you look, his right foot goes out of play there, just short of the end zone. So while he has defenders in his neighborhood, probably had the chance to absorb a little bit more contact and plunge in. Instead, it's now third and goal. Swope behind Shaw, who's kept on many of these occasions. He'll keep the score. Jabo Shaw's second touchdown run of the day. Give him 14 on the air, and Georgia Southern gets the score anyway. Jabo Shaw leading another scoring drive and capping it off himself. Orchestrating this offense as good as it can be done. Son of a coach, brother of a quarterback starting at South Carolina. The kick from Adrian Mora. Got it. And Georgia Southern on seven plays, 56 yards, three minutes and 13 seconds. Another score. 28 17, Georgia Southern, the quarterfinals on ESPN3. You're watching the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent a Car. And we come at you. From the prettiest little stadium in America. Paulson Stadium at Statesboro, Georgia. Jabo Shaw getting it done more in the air with 56 yards and on the ground, 25. But his one yard run, his second rushing TD of the day, capped off another scoring run for Georgia Southern. 28 17. Georgia Southern the lead. And the kickoff unit on the field as Jabo Shaw gets word from upstairs. Billy Greer on the kickoff for Georgia Southern. Roosevelt Boone, the deep man for me. Boone already with a kickoff return for a touchdown. That helped me hold on to a pulse in the first half. Greer's kick. 
right toward Boone. Able to take some strides forward, catch it in rhythm from his own 13. And undercut. Nothing. His block failed to hold. As Georgia Southern outstanding kickoff coverage. That's how you do it right there. The closer you get, the faster you go on kickoff coverage. That's an old special teams adage. Boyd Sasser, the strong safety and junior out of Millen, Georgia, gets the big hit. And now the alternating Georgia Southern chance from either side of the stadium. Four after showing blitz and Smith still flushed. Hit as he throws and wisely throws it away, but he took a pop. Good job getting rid of that ball, not taking a big sack. They don't need that right now. I'll tell you one thing that's kind of interesting after we take see the big hit. You watch over there at the Georgia Southern bench, you see an offensive line. I've never seen this before. Usually you see quarterbacks on the headset talking to somebody upstairs. You got the entire offensive line with headsets on talking with their offensive coordinator who's upstairs in the box he's also the offensive line coach talking them through everything to make adjustments unusual let's pressure shown they only rush four one-on-one -on -one. smith left side incomplete intended for arthur williams now john this brings up third and ten you don't want to send your defense back out there in the field and what do you call on third and ten with this style of offense? Well, you got to throw the football. You got to throw a screen. Screen in the flat though could be dangerous. This Georgia Southern team takes the ball away incredibly frequently. Thirteen picks on the year, led by Laron Scott. There's my man out there, Brent Russell, leading the charge right over the center. They show blitz, only rush three, but Stunt Russell, and a pass picked off! They get the pick, Darius Eubanks, the junior backer who plays that bandit hybrid position, his second interception. He's a phenomenal athlete. This is tight coverage. They play a lot of man-to-man -man here at Georgia Southern. And Perillo runs downfield, gets engaged, by Eubanks, and he just picks the ball off. So here comes the Georgia Southern offense, now with over 300 yards rushing on the game. We're not even halfway through the third quarter. Jabo Shaw. Fakes the dive. Late pitch, Jonathan Bryant. Nothing there. Trevor Costin, the free safety, all-conference performer, brings him down after a gain of a couple. And we've talked earlier in the game, Georgia Southern has been able to use all of the field. The game plan coming in was to try to get Georgia Southern to run the football on the boundary, which they did that time, and they made it a stop for just a yard gain. Second down and eight. Just as Georgia Southern sets up the line, play clock at single digits. Bain playing soft. Shaw indeed throwing. End zone wide open. Catrilla showers the redshirt freshman. Had a good eight strides on the field. 25-yard touchdown pass. Georgia Southern with 34 awaiting the extra point. A substituted cornerback. Axel Afori's in there at left corner, also with a new safety, Kari Almatin. In between those two, on the scissors route, they are not able to make the pickup. Adrian Mora, perfect on extra points. And Georgia Southern. Another score. They can do it on the ground. Jabo Shaw and Contrilla Showers show they can do it in the air. Shaw with 10 touchdowns in the air on the year. Georgia Southern trying to march to the semifinals. ESPN. What 
Georgia Southern another score make it 35 17 the Eagles the lead and we take a look coach at the Home Depot coaching adjustments that Maine is trying to make to stay in this game well coming into this game they wanted to make them run to the short side of the field and what you see here is two defenders one and two right there on one they got them outnumbered they were able to do a great job with the quarterback being feathered but they want the run to run the football into the short side of the field now they come right back and hit him with a deep pass this is what j Boss Shaw does so well just when you think you've got something stopped on the ground stopping the triple option he goes up top with the pass now kickoff time the familiar name of Billy Greer sends it away Axel Ofori into his end zone off his hands and a touchback this Georgia Southern offensive attack seven different rushers have at least 20 yards on the ground that last play a two play 27 yard drive took just 49 seconds and that's uncharacteristic for the day off the turnover that was a really killer play right there and all Bain can hope to do now is move the ball keep the ball move the chains get back into your style of offense don't try to change things offensively here do what you do best down 18 points every touch is a virtual must score almost everyone is on the line of scrimmage one deep man and they go to the quick slant and they get some positive yardage Arthur Williams taken down by Laron Scott and once again Brent Russell getting in there see when you bring pressure as they did with the corner blitz and the linebacker they cannot block them all then they can't also double team Brent Russell they get a single block him. second and three Pushon Brown Georgia Southern goes for the strip and as a result he gets some extra yardage seven yard gain to the 36 yard line Maine is no huddle most of the time sometimes they go faster than others and Warren Smith can call audibles but he hasn't seen this Georgia Southern defense much He's been on the bench quite a bit they show blitz in the secondary Smith recognizing play clock at nine and listen to this crowd he's responding to Brent Russell up getting him excited they only rush four pump fake looking deep and a little too tall for session hung about to dry she took a bit of a hit from Jarek McKinnon with Georgia Southern up pressing getting in receivers faces Warren Smith has these audibles to try to throw down field he pumped him good coverage and who is that there with the coverage it's the backup quarterback Jarek McKinnon playing defense second down and ten the stunt a four-man rush and the pass complete Damar Altman slips through the first hit a third one finally brings him down just short of midfield Josh Gebhardt the end just think about these two receivers are out there playing for Jack Cosgrove right now and there's no backups that I see on the depth chart they're both Richard freshmen as you said earlier, John, they're track stars that didn't get heavily recruited, but they're playing great football. And they're going to need them down here to try to get some points on the board. Motion from the tight end, Perillo. The backer, Eubank, shows man, but the blitz comes, and Smith gets it off. Great block. Frees up Arthur Williams. And Williams with that track speed. Williams diving to the pylon. Just short. They're going to mark him officially out. At the three yard line, Lavelle Westbrooks took him out of play. Georgia Southern brings a corner blitz from the field, but the play that was called was a screen pass with Perillo out blocking in front and, and just frees up Arthur Williams to catch the ball coming back towards the quarterback. 48 yard completion. Down a goal from the three. The gun and four wide, Pushon Brown, the setback to the right of Warren Smith. Georgia Southern showing blitz. Smith locked in left side, hoists it there, and 
has himself a touchdown. He finds John Ebling, who is the fourth string quarterback. He had no catches all year until he grabbed the touchdown last week at App State. He now has two grabs. Both have gone for six. This is how deep they're going over there on that main bench to try to find a receiver. John Ebling, the fourth string quarterback now out there on the field playing that Derek Session, that what I call the U-back. You go where we want you to play. Good Ryan. grab, good throw, and you know, a significant score for me to, to, to try to get some energy back on their sideline. The point after from Brian Harvey and Chris Treister, designed keep, stood up. Pushed back and then some. But Treister, who ran a similar play out of a swinging gate, not out of a set formation, for a game-winning two-point conversion, an overtime win to James Madison, one of the top plays in college football this year, denied. And a smart play, no, no harm, no foul right there to, to run that type of play to get a two-pointer. And the way Jack Cosgrove looked at it, you get the two, you make it a 10-point game. Yeah. And you could be within a field goal to score. But we have just the six for Ebeling and then Treister denied on the two-point conversion try. As Treister ran that football, it looked like the term that we used to call run to darkness instead of to daylight. He had a blocker on the outside in session and, and, and should have just continued on a path to the corner and instead he darted back inside and got met with two or three Georgia Southern defenders. This main team a year ago was four and seven. Jack Cosgrove said the biggest difference for Maine, the decision-making of Warren Smith. That's what led them to not only a runners-up finish in the very deep Colonial Athletic Association, but also all the way here to the quarterfinals. We come at you from Statesboro, Georgia. Alan E. Paulson Stadium, the prettiest little stadium in America. John Sadak, John Bunning in the booth. Angela Mallon on the sidelines. Brian Harvey. On for the kickoff, not Jordan Waxman, the punter who normally handles kickoff duties. LaRon Scott, deep to receive. They have not kicked at him. Many pooches today. This one, straight away. And not Scott, but the up man in front of him. It's McKinnon. McKinnon can make plays. McKinnon brought down from behind at the main 41-yard line. They deny Scott, they still get burned. You, you, do, you still want to kick the ball deep you want to but you are, you are paying the price paying the price and we go back to the main touchdown John Ebeling the fourth string quarterback just a smash corner the outside receiver running the smash route just sitting down keeping the defender close to him and allowing the inside slot receiver to get up in the corner and catch the touchdown pass off a 41-yard kickoff return. Georgia Southern at the main 42. The dive. Gain of maybe a yard. This is time for the main defense to take a stand here. They, they really need to. And once again, they start off with the dive in the, on the first part of the triple option. Two, Swope. See what they come back with this time. You see players shuffling in and out. Those are A-backs or tight ends in this case. Coming off the field, going on the field, different formations, different personnel for Georgia Southern as well. This Georgia Southern team that began the day fourth in the country at the FCS level and kickoff returns. Big part of Georgia Southern's success today. Tip ball incomplete. Jabo Shaw, very dangerous toss. The man who's normally so efficient. Tried to throw a quick hitch route to the inside receiver. The defensive line did a terrific job getting their hands up. They now have one of the best third down situations that they've had all day, a third and nine. That doesn't mean that Georgia Southern is going to throw. Michael Cole got his hand on it. He's been a big part of Maine's outstanding kick blocking unit, both on field goal and extra points. The leading sacker, I believe, too, John, with 11, 15 tackles for losses as well. He's a good football player. Jack Cosgrove said the day he gave his verbal, the coaching staff high-fived. They were worried that UConn or Rutgers would swoop in late. Shaw, deep ball, first down. Darian Robinson. 
After a tip ball, the cool confidence to fire a strike and wide open over the middle. And that is the take no prisoners attitude of Jeff Munkin and these Georgia Southern Eagles 27 yard pass completion. And it comes on a third down play where Georgia Southern has converted eight in ten tries. You're getting the field position the Eagles have had on kickoff return. You're eight of ten on third down conversion. Good luck stopping hard, these Eagles. Hard for the defense. Late bad pitch behind Darian Robinson. And a Georgia Southern team that does put it on the ground, gives it away. A main squad that entered plus 11 in turnover margin on the year. Gets the turnover and the ball. Sam Shipley with the recovery. This is a huge play for, for the main defense. And once again, that ball looked like it was tipped by the defensive end to create the misdirection of the ball going to the pitch man. The end man on the line of scrimmage, I believe that was Doug Alston, tipped that pass, that lateral to the pitch back, backwards, big recovery for me. Alston, who had been limited due to a cast on his hand, able to show that manipulation prowess. DeMar Altman, first down. First play goes for 13 from the man who used to wear number 13. Warren Smith only had one bad half of football on the year. It was the second half at New Hampshire, the regular season finale, threw three interceptions and a 30 to 27 loss. But Jack Cosgrove said he was pretty banged up, took some big hits that day, along with many of his teammates. And now healthy Warren Smith trying to lead a comeback. Williams with Hudson Presume on his back, nine yards, just a yard short of the first down. So Maine continuing to drive. Time continuing to tick away inside of three minutes left third quarter. Good protection on the twist game. Georgia Southern running a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Working on Presume at that point with the deeper dig pattern inside. Running away from the corner to pick up position in the pass. This Maine team has journeyed far all the way down to Statesboro. The program raised over four hundred thousand dollars for all of the charter flights this year as warren smith calls timeout only one bus trip on the year maine has played at pitt and lost by just a touchdown has wanted james madison has wanted appalachian state and is now trying to win at paulson stadium where only three times before have the eagles lost in a playoff scenario Warren Smith, the first main quarterback to crack 3,000 passing yards. He's going to need to add a bunch more here, Coach. 35-23. And we take a look back at why Warren Smith called his timeout. They're showing that blitz pressure. And Smith calls the T.O. But, Coach, we have seen that creeping toward the line of scrimmage blitz pressure many times, and it's often not brought. They're just rushing for it. It's just a show trying to confuse the quarterback in, in the offensive line. It's second and short. You want to make sure you get a first down. They want to move the chains. Coach Cosgrove, he's taking this team on the road. He calls them the road warriors. We're like the NFL. We, we travel. Smith under center. He needs two yards. Motion from Session. Push on Brown, the deep back, gets the ball, gets the first down. Still churning his legs at midfield, and they'll mark him down to the 50. Brent Russell, though, all 6'2", 291 pounds of him, did his best to deny Push on Brown. Watch Russell hit the center and knock him back. They try to gang block him with the backside guard to try to knock him sideways. He holds his ground. He's strong. He's stout. He's low to the ground and plays great with his hands. He's a former wrestler, folks, and he is relentless. Converted from defensive end from a 3-3-5. 
They play fake. Smith launching it deep. Arthur Williams just off. Could not connect. Deion Stanley in coverage. That was a touchdown. Great play fake. Williams is open just over his outstretched hands. In that case, you want the receiver to continue to run before you look back because you waste so much time looking back for the ball. Continue to run. Run it down. He put plenty of air on the day. He needed to run that ball down and catch it. Second down and 10 from midfield. Blitz comes. And the quick hitter, the safety valve and Derek Session. He converted from the running back ranks due to wide receiver injury. And it's now third down and four. He's going to have been a great player for them. He's a senior out of Baltimore. Derek Session does it all. Plays wide receiver. Plays tight end. He's the U back. He runs back and forth. He seals off edges for runs. Georgia Southern showing blitz. Only three down linemen. The blitz comes. Smith under pressure. Under throws his target in Derek Session. Fourth down. Warren Smith's going to make this throw. They can't pick them all up, but he's got a sight adjust and he's got to get this ball up. This is right down in the dirt. Session is open. And Maine is 0 for 3 on third down conversions so now the black bears who led the caa 67 percent effective on fourth downs in 18 tries make it number 19. they need this score they're coming here comes the house there goes the ball and it's short that's a completion but it's short of the first down and i know the house is coming there coach but a little surprised to even see that route as part of the package. Yeah, th that route is not part of the package. He's got to throw it to the other receivers. He's got to count on his protection. Good tight coverage by Georgia Southern to make the stop. Presume taking down Demar Altman. Georgia Southern taking over on downs and taking command of this game with another score. Well, that was a big set of downs right there. They had an opportunity. Only one minute and four seconds until the fourth quarter. Jabo Shaw fakes the pitch, looking, and tosses the screen. Robert Brown has been on the bench quite a bit. Sidesteps a man to midfield. That's a gain of eight. Sam Shipley took him out of play. Robert Brown had some form of injury take him out of play, Coach. We saw him go off to the training room. And then he came back on the field, and the, the trainers were working with him down on the field there to, to see that... Uh, they could determine if he could go back in, and he is. He's available. You saw the number one flash by those fans. Usually that's more rhetoric. This year it was literal. Georgia Southern was the number one team in the country for seven weeks and wants to be number one when the season comes to a close. Shaw gives the dive. It's smoke. First down. Tick, tick, tick to the 44, gain of six. And you see Sam Shipley on the hit. You see Shipley make the hit, but he drags him forward with him for another four or five yards. He has got great, great leg strength. He is tough to bring down at the line of scrimmage. He's going to fall forward and make extra yards. The winningest program in playoff games in FCS history. The most wins, the most titles. They're a fourth quarter away from going to the semifinals. 35-23. Jeff Munkin and his Eagles lead Maine the fourth quarter on the other side here on ESPN3. The band plays on. The 12th man well represented by the tens of thousands that populate Paulson Stadium. And Georgia Southern has not known a deficit on this day. We go to the fourth quarter from Statesboro, Georgia. Paulson Stadium, the sun setting. 
on both this game and perhaps main season for Jack Cosgrove and company. It's Georgia Southern has the ball and a 35-23 lead. John, it looks that way. You know, I wrote down at the beginning of the game, can Maine hold up for 60 minutes? Can Maine not panic? Get better at, with game speed on the triple option. Can Maine make some early stops? They haven't been able to do either of those things, any of those things. Offensively, they need to make plays, and they couldn't do it on fourth down. Dominique Swope on the dive. This Georgia Southern team has already held the ball for over 31 and a half minutes on the game. We're just starting the fourth quarter. On the year, Georgia Southern led the Southern Conference by a lot at 33 minutes and five seconds. That's the domination that has been time of possession today. This is the FCS quarterfinals. A national semifinal berth is on the line. Some teams already through. Georgia Southern, it's old hat, the six-time national champs. Maine has never been to a semi. Toss to Darian Robinson. And Georgia Southern with each successive run, distancing the Black Bears from that dream even a little further. We take a look at the remaining teams, where we were start of the day, where we are, and where we're going. As Georgia Southern at the main 28-yard line. Those toss plays to those A backs that are in the short motion happen so fast. They're on the defense. They can't react quick enough. Heavy motion. And here come the flags. Almost felt that one coming. Paul start. 76 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Trevor McBurnett, he's already been whistled once today. And this Georgia Southern team sees the penalties continue to pile up, but. It hasn't really been a big-time effect. The few times it could have burnt the Eagles, they've still scored. Overall, it has not had the effect. It's just making the head coach mad. <laughs> Gives him a lot of things to coach next week. Ten penalties, 73 yards for a Georgia Southern team that only averages a shade more than 43 yards in penalties a game. And, John, I say that. There's still plenty of time. Maine can still get some stops here. Turnover would be huge. Again, it looked like movement left side is... Shaw faking the handoff gets taken down to the backfield by Craig Capella. Capella really closes down here from the defensive tackle position to make a big play for him. Sophomore out of Galloway, New Jersey, played at Absagami High School and began the day with four tackles for loss. It's a long day for these main defensive linemen in particular. Second down and 17. Shaw on the option. Wilcox on the pitch. Shoulders a defender out of bounds. Nearly has the first. He's only a yard short. Malik Walker absorbed the harm from J.J. Wilcox. Great block on the perimeter by A-back Jonathan Bryant. Cuts down the defender. Springs him. And listen in on this hit. That's a 14-yard run for Wilcox. Wilcox is a big guy, six foot, 215 pound junior. He's made a lot of nice plays for Georgia Southern today, both blocking and running the football. Third and three. Shaw the King. Shaw riding some would-be tacklers, including Vincent Gibbons. And this will depend upon the spot. It looks darn close. Georgia Southern looking for its ninth third down conversion in 11 tries on the game. And we will have an official timeout for a measurement. And here's Shaw behind Swope. Once again, that's the quarterback follow. Fakes the run. Swope becomes a blocker. You can't account for that. The linebacker's trying to tackle the quarterback with a blocker right in his chest. And they are inches short. That's about as close as you can be. Some boos come out, but this is automatic for Georgia <laughs> Southern, right? The Swope was freshman of the year because of his running, but now he's turning into a blocker for Jay Shaw. It's one of the, the really good plays of triple option football is this quarterback follow play. You just can't account for it. 
And Georgia Southern going for it on fourth down for the third time today. Already with one such conversion. They bunch tight. Swope behind Shaw. Shaw keeps. Plunges. First down. And not only do they get the conversion, keeping the drive going to get a score, but Jeff Munkin knows that's more time Maine doesn't have the football. Absolutely. That's that's what this offense is all about. J. Bo Shaw saw where the linebacker was blitzing in one A gap. He said, I'll go in the other. Very good captain of the ship is J. Bo Shaw. He runs this offense so well. Jabo Shaw, son of a head coach. His brother Connor had the starting job at South Carolina as a penalty nullifies what Ball was Swope. On the left guard, five yard penalty, first down. What was Swope going to the end zone? But from what I understand, Connor Shaw was a wide receiver. Jabo Shaw was the quarterback with him. And then Shaw, of course, Jabo goes to Georgia Tech to run the triple. For Paul Johnson and uh, Connor ends up going to South Carolina. He became a quarterback when Jay Ball graduated. Now the the field general up there for Steve Spurrier in the Gamecocks. They have to be much maligned. Stephen Garcia got the final heave ho from Steve Spurrier. First down at 15. Shaw decides to keep. Decides to get brought down hard. By Craig Capella. Physicality ratcheting up. Capella slow to come to his feet. This is what Maine wanted to do here. They wanted to get them to run into the short side of the field, feather the quarterback, make him fake, and then get him on the ground. They wanted him to run the football. Many of the fans, I think, thought that there was a face mask. The hand came in really close to that face mask or area. A horse collar, John, back of the shoulder pads, one or the other. Now second down. Shaw, late flip. Jonathan Bryant, nothing. Maine's team speed. In this case, Darlos James, the corner out of Mount Vernon, New York, nullifies the run. Maine has some very good athletes. They do a great job recruiting in New Jersey and New York. And that's a great job keeping your feet there and staying on your feet and making the sure tackle. Darlos James. As a result, it's third down and nine. The Eagles did not get their last third down of this drive. But then they got it on a very short fourth. This is important. Here, though, third and nine, Maine showing blitz. Delayed handoff and slope undercut, nothing. And you've got to think field goal time for the first time on this afternoon. And, and if, if John, if he doesn't make this tackle right here, if he doesn't go down on that shoestring tackle, he's in the end zone. Great job by Jerron McMillan, the all CAA safety out of Hillside, New Jersey. Now, Adrian Amora. Looking for his 58th career field goal. It's on the way. It's a little left. It's no good. And so Mora, who if his career ended today, would own the all-time best field goal made percentage. Began the day converting 84% of his field goal tries. Unable to do so. This is a big stop for Maine. Gives them a shot to move it downfield quickly. They don't have much time. We'll be back on ESPN 3. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. National quarterfinal action. The winner moves on to the semis. Will it be Maine for the first time in program history? Or Georgia Southern trying to gallop toward a seventh national title? Warren Smith. Has the ball after a field goal miss by Georgia Southern's Adrian Mora. Maine with two timeouts down a dozen. Pump fake. Deep ball. And his running back, Pushon Brown, underthrown as we go down to Angela Mallet. 
Coach Cosgrove just came over to the bench, was giving everybody high fives, saying what a big deal it was to be able to block that field goal. He said, let's stay focused and get a score. We got to go out there and score, guys. John? Well, thank you, Angela. Now Maine has to take advantage and get some yardage and even more importantly, a score. Trying a little trick play. Always worth looking at Pushon Brown just a little short. Is a fake hitch wheel route to push on. Tight end, Justin Perillo. Brought down by Darius Eubanks. But Georgia Southern will allow that. Time ticket. Third down. Man to man coverage. Eubanks versus Perillo. Darius Eubanks runs a 4 5 5 40. He was a wide receiver in his high school days at Thompson, Georgia. And he's also one of many on this defense that have added some weight since last season. Just a junior. Put on 13 pounds since last year. Much of the defensive front has added 15 to 25 pounds. And that weight has been pressing on Warren Smith, who's over on third downs today. Finds his target, slipping through a tackle to Mar Altman. First down. Finally brought to earth. By McMillan and Stanley at the 45 yard line. It's a gain of 20. How about these young receivers? Once again, we've talked about it before, John. There's, there's no backups. They play every snap, they never come out. And they need to push tempo here. This main team that often goes no huddle, but will then look sidelines sometimes for adjustments from upstairs. And that could take some time to process. They don't have that luxury. Smith tip ball off the hand of Eubanks. It's the line got up and in charge. When you force the known situation, which Maine has to almost pass every single down, that allows the defensive line to press the pocket and time it to get their hands up to tip balls. Lake Riley with that deflection. Second down and 10. Warren Smith grew up idolizing Brett Favre. Favre knows a thing or two about coming from behind late. Erasing fourth quarter deficits. Down a dozen. Smith over the middle. Heavy coverage and incomplete. Arthur Williams on a jump ball. He's trying to rip it away from the covering Lavelle Westbrooks. Great finish by Westbrooks right here. This is a well-thrown ball, but terrific coverage breaking down from the safety position to rip the ball out and finish the play. Young players, watch what he did. He finished the play. On the scoreboard, they show G-A-T-A, -A, or Gata. The longtime saying of former head coach Eric Russell. Blitz show. Smith on third down. Plenty of time. No options. And Smith on the run. Reverses field. First down. Great slide by Warren Smith to the 41-yard line. There's a little far of action right there. He had no place to go. Terrific coverage by Georgia Southern. There was no, def no receiver open. Pulls it down and runs for a first down. 12-yard run. Right to the line of scrimmage. Out of the gun. Hand off Pushan Brown. Couple of stutter steps. Eubanks brings him down at the 34. So a gain of nine. Injured player for Maine. That's Chris Howley down there. He's he was an all-conference player, one of their best offensive linemen, right guard. Played for one of my players that I coached at Glassboro State out of Run of Maine, New Jersey, Triton High School. All-conference player. So the training staff tends to Howley. As we will step aside. Statesboro, Georgia, Paulson Stadium. Jack Cosgrove sees a banged up black bear, but his team on the drive. 30. Chris Howley, all conference right guard for the main black bears out of Triton High School in Runnymede, New Jersey. Out of this game right now. His injury. Brought about the timeout of the field, and the Black Bears try to go on without him. 
continuing this spurt. Steve Shea, the senior, out of Corinna Maine, takes his spot at right guard on second and one. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. National semifinal appearance on the line. John Sadak, John Bunning in the booth. Angela Mallon on the sidelines. Warren Smith under center. Lamar Altman in motion. Hand off. Push on Brown. Spins his way to a first and ten. Lavelle Westbrooks with the ultimate takedown. As there is a flag on the play. Pushon Brown, 1,000-yard rusher from After Maine. 11 on touchdowns rushing. So we get word of a personal foul on Josh Rowe. He was a second-team all-conference linebacker last year, so tack on 15 more. Josh Rowe, who hails from Alabama, he was called by his high school coach, the best linebacker that I have coached in 35 years. And he is coming out of the game to be spoken with. Jeff Monk and the head coach going right to row. It's Maine. Six and a half minutes and ticking. Down a dozen. Armed with a couple of timeouts. Hard cadence from Smith on the edge. And barely finds session. Able to go up the ladder and get it as we check in on the injury situation with Angela on the sidelines. Chris Halley is on the bench right now. Trainers are looking at his left ankle. They're taking off what's already a brace on his left ankle. It looks to be a possible ankle sprain. It's questionable whether he'll go back in or not, John. Well, thank you, Angela. So Steve Shea out there still at right guard. Let's see how that side holds up against Brent Russell. And a bad snap for Warren Smith. Just what you couldn't have happen right then and there probably saw some pressure coming out of the corner of his eye it's a it's a low to the right of his body snap it was a, not a good snap and remember that was brent russell that was matched up right in between williamson and the new right guard shea perhaps he knows a drop down and the guard to his right the pressure coming from russell Third and 11. Big blitz shown. They bring it. Smith picks it up. One on one. Jump ball incomplete. Laron Scott, the first team all conference performer, taking it away from DeMar Altman. Hard to beat that cover guy. He is really good. It's a good pass. Watch the pressure coming. He just unloads it with McKinnon tackling from behind. There's no question what Coach Cosgrove's going to do here. Fit the right play. Here he... Main season is on the line. Here it is. Main needs this conversion. The Black Bears led the CAA in fourth down conversions. 0 for 1 today against the Blitz. 1 on 1. Inside. Knocked down by Laron Scott. Intended for Arthur Williams. And Georgia Southern's biggest secondary performer comes up huge on consecutive plays. And barring a turnover, that probably cements a win. 35-23, Georgia Southern back on offense when we come back on ESPN. The winds briskly blow the six championship flags here at Paulson Stadium for the Georgia Southern Eagles. They enjoy a 35-23 lead on the main Black Bears. And for more on a flag of a different color, here's Angela. That's right, John. It's Derek Hyden that flies the flag of a different color. What that stands for is don't give up, never surrender, and fight until the end. And it was Coach Munkin that asked him to fly this flag because on September the 24th, when Derek made a hit in the Western Carolina game, he cracked his vertebra and it was in his neck. So now he's wearing that halo traction device for at least another week when doctors will evaluate the stability in Hyden's spine. In the midst of it all, he's kept such a positive attitude. I'm actually standing next to him on the side sidelines right now his number four jersey isn't a football jersey though it's a baseball jersey because a regular jersey would not fit over the halo device but we will get good reports hopefully on Derek Hyden back to you John well thank you Angela and that is a black flag that he flies it's an idea that Jeff Munkin had before the years Dominique Swope on first down plunges for six he wanted to have the black flag flown to signify don't give up for the team 
and it was intended to be a rotating effort until the tragic injury to Derek Hyden who fortunately looks like will make a full recovery now both these coaches care so much about their players coach Cosgrove is a team builder and coach Monk and he's a disciplinarian believes in all the traditions that have been established here at Georgia Southern play clock at one but motion and a flag ball is loose and Maine pounces upon it and what is the call here it could be defensive offsides Raybone Charles it looked like had the recovery but Georgia Southern indicating it's out of offside eight. defense five yard penalty remains Second Trying to time the, the uh, snap count and make a big play. It's Givens. That's a good thought. Trying till the end. He has such a, Coach Crosgrove has such a positive attitude, enthusiasm throughout practice. I was at practice this past August. Yeah, the first penalty of the day on the main Black Bears. Georgia Southern a first down Maine has two timeouts, but it needs a turnover Play clock at two And the dive for Swope takes the first hit from Capella, but Cole Eventually brings him back down to earth Mentioned earlier the catchphrase that's often used on T-shirts on pennants on the scoreboard here at Paulson Stadium got a GATA came about when Irk Russell Was at Georgia Tech he was coaching for the University of Georgia at the time He's defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs and Georgia Tech all throughout its facility on its shirts on its gear at the Georgia Tech Athletic Association GTAA and he said when we go back out there in a halftime speech for the second stanza we need you to rearrange those letters and make it G-A-T-A -A and get after their blank. J.J. Wilcox on the run. Gets a gain of a couple, and that's a saying that Irk carried with him when he rejuvenated the football program here in Statesboro. Good stuff. A lot of great traditions here. Irk Russell started it all. And the other coaches have carried it forward. As Maine calls timeout. And there's the bust of Irk Russell. Restart of the program back in 1983. Already through to the national semifinals. Montana last night routing you and I, Sam Houston State, dispatching of Montana State convincingly earlier today. And a game in progress. Lehigh out of the Patriot League at North Dakota State. Lehigh, though, without All America wide receiver Ryan Spadola, who shattered multiple program records. Suspended by the NCAA due to a racial slur that was used in a retweet. The 2011 NCAA Division I football championship continues next weekend. Semifinal games on December the 16th and 17th. Both games will be on the ESPN networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. And Georgia Southern trying to get through to those semis in pursuit of a seventh national title. Jeff Munkin looking for his first as a head coach. He's in year two. Shaw out of the gun on third and eight. Blitz pressure. Design handoff, not a whole lot. Takes multiple hits, but finally, Dominique Swope goes down. For these main black bears, though, what a turnaround season that it looks like will come to a close. Maine had four wins a year ago. The preseason number nine choice in what is essentially a 10-team CAA. UMass bound for the MAC and FBS would not count toward league standings. And Maine not only got to the playoffs, but got its third ever playoff win, all under the stewardship of the alumnus, Jack Cosgrove. He's got a great coaching staff as well. These players have stuck together. They've made so many road trips. Got into the playoff. Big win last week. Coming here with high hopes. Hoping to slow down this option attack. Couldn't do it. But I know Coach Crosgrove is proud of these players 
for their efforts. Yeah, Jack Cosgrove knows that once again his team was banged up. These main black bears don't have the depth of many of their other CAA brothers. They lost Derek Buttles against Pitt. They really lost Maurice player. McDonald against Towson. Their leading receiver. They lost Derek Johnson, missed the final nine games of the year. One of the other veterans in the receiving core, yet still here they made it. Charlie Edwards on the punt for the first time in these playoffs. The high wobbler, fair catch. And Trevor Costin brings it in at his own 34. And the main Black Bears send out their offense. Out of timeouts, two minutes, 40 seconds left. Warren Smith and company need a score in the worst way. John, I've spent a little time over here at this uh, football office of Georgia Southern the last couple weekends being down here, and I, I saw a sign that Coach Munkin hung. Congratulations to the 2010-2011 class for earning the highest human little GPA in program history. It's good stuff. This it's important. Not only winning on the field, but in the classroom. Smith on first down. Knocked down by Darius Eubanks. Don't see a tight end overwhelmed off it, but Eubanks did just that to Justin Perillo. He's had that assignment for Perillo all day. They play a lot of man coverage here at George Southern. Pressure again on Smith. And Perillo, by the way, has 40 pounds on Eubanks. Second and 10. Perillo just a sophomore. Got a great future at Maine. Georgia Southern showing that blitz. They only rush three. Smith with plenty of time. Picked off. Jarek McKinnon got a second start in the secondary, and he's got two picks, and that one will seal it. And, and John, he might be the starting quarterback next year for this team. That's how good an athlete he is. Jack is. Cosgrove shaking his head. He knows that decision making for Warren Smith would be of paramount importance. That's just not a good throw. He was throwing it to the right place, I think, John. He just couldn't make could, couldn't complete the pass. Couldn't get it on the outside number of the receiver. No main out of timeouts and just about out of time. Georgia Southern with the ball. As the na 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 chant begins, and the Georgia Southern tradition of shaking the keys, telling the opponent to warm up the bus. JJ Wilcox to the 40 yard line. Gain of six. As I said, John, I spent a lot of time over there at the football office. I've got to thank the video director, Matthew Chops Hammock, for allowing me to be part of his office for the last couple weekends. I thank you so much. And you hear that harm. <laughs> helmet to helmet, shoulder to shoulder. Still playing hard. The director of Media Relations, Rose Carter, thank you so much for all your help with our team down here this weekend. <laughs> Dominique Swamp. First down. And the way this Georgia Southern team is going. Likely to have a couple of thousand yard rushers on the season. And just think, Swope didn't even step on the field hardly until three weeks ago. Didn't carry the ball against Citadel. Didn't carry the ball against App State. And now Swope and Robert Brown both within a hundred yards of a thousand. And victory formation time for Javo Shaw. He transferred from Georgia Tech to win a championship. He takes a knee. And he's only a couple of kneel downs away from another step in that direction. And listen to this crowd at Paulson Stadium. Delaware knocked him out of the quarters last year, or the semis last year, and here they are going back again. 
Another knee from Shaw. It's been a team effort. We've chronicled this triple option. Here are the bountiful names that have been a part of a true team victory for Georgia Southern. And another march to a semifinal. Jeff Munkin reminding his team they have to snap. There are all those names. And now Munkin going across, exchanging pleasantries with Jack Cosgrove. A hearty congratulations. Extended from Cosgrove to Munkin. As time ticks away, and the Eagles are on their way to the semifinal round of the FCS playoffs. One more time, the chant of the fans at Paulson Stadium. And depending upon what happens in that Lehigh North Dakota State game, there could be one more time at Paulson. Should Lehigh win, Georgia Southern would host that semifinal. But if North Dakota State gets the victory, North Dakota State is a higher seed, would host Georgia Southern. That would be the second ever meeting. Georgia Southern lost at North Dakota State, and it's passed. One more time, the side. And these Georgia Southern Eagles, their 11th win of the year.